30 years ago today, right at this hour, our 5 p.m. newscast aired a live interview with a man we call Dennis. His true identity wouldn't be revealed for another seven and a half months. But the allegations made by Dennis in that five-minute segment caught the attention of the entire world. The public came to know about a top-secret place known as Area 51. The I team's George Knapp was part of that conversation. The person who was interviewed was actually named Bob Lazar, George. May 15, 1989, seems like only yesterday, not really. I was the co-anchor of the 5 o'clock news with Paula Francis, and our newscast back then featured a nightly interview segment. The guest we had scheduled for that day bailed on us at the last minute, so I placed a call to famed aviator John Lear because he'd been telling me he knew someone who'd been hired to work at an ultra-secret military base near Groom Lake. We had no idea the interview would still be of interest 30 years later. Uh... Uh, there's really no way I can prove it without revealing my identity and getting myself into more trouble than I have already. Exactly what's going on up there? Well, there's several, uh, actually nine uh, flying saucers, flying discs, uh, that are out there of extraterrestrial origin. And uh, they're basically being dismantled. Uh, some are, well, in various stages of, of completion, built from other parts, and they're being test flown. and. Uh, uh, basically just analyzed. You say there's nine saucers. How, how are those tests going? Uh, as far as what? As far as whether they're successful and, and, and that sort of thing. Oh, well, some of them uh, are 100 percent intact and operate perfectly. Uh, the other ones are being taken apart. Uh, I was involved mainly in, in propulsion and the power source uh, and, uh, you know, basically, uh, as far as I can remember, there are about half of them do operate, and the other half are, are just been torn down, uh, basically to analyze the components to them. Where, where did we get these saucers? Uh, how did they come into the hands of the government? I haven't the slightest idea, and uh, you have to understand the information is very compartmentalized. The interview had been set up at the last minute. Dennis, whose real name is Bob Lazar, met our news unit in front of the home of John Lear, put on a microphone, then sent shockwaves through UFO circles. Lazar recalls what was going through his mind at the time. It was a very frightening moment. It was uh, certainly not a comfortable thing to do. Within days, the story of the Dennis interview had traveled around the world. Busloads of the saucer curious descended on the outskirts of Area 51. The little town of Rachel became a hub of E.T. enthusiasm, and the search was on for the true identity of the man in the shadows. Up until the very moment, I was wondering whether or not this was a good thing to do. And no, to be honest, I'm still not sure it was a good idea. When Lazar had told us he was concerned about getting into more trouble than he was already in, he was referring to this. Here's the night John Lear saw his first flying disc. In the Two months before the Dennis interview, Lazar began taking a few friends out to the desert on Wednesday nights. They focused their attention not on Groom Lake, but in the direction of Papoose Lake, which is where Lazar said he worked, a facility he called S4. And sure enough, on each of three outings, the groups witnessed a glowing disc rise above of Papoose, even though officially there has never been a base or facility there. How did he know? Three decades later, the public is still fascinated with the story Lazar unleashed. I was, you know, very worried at the time about repercussions and, of course, had no idea that we would be talking about this 30 years down the road. My former co-anchor, Paula Francis, sent a note this morning. She remembers that day and that interview. She said, quote, I was skeptical of Dennis, but as we soon learned, much of what he told us about Area 51 turned out to be true. Quite a bit of new information has surfaced in recent months about Lazar, about Pentagon UFO programs. Tonight at 6, the social changes that interview set into motion. And then at 11, how Lazar's story stacks up against the recent Pentagon UFO videos. We have links to other material on our website. Back to you. That might be one of the first examples of something going viral. Right after that story <laughs> right. airs, it was everywhere. Thank you, George.